once did a television interview with him. We were talking, and I said, General Powell, here you are, the son of Jamaican immigrants. You were born in Harlem. You were raised in the South Bronx. You went to City College, New York, where you made C's and D's. You have an ROTC commission, originally. You're black, and you're chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He said, it's a wonderful country, Sam. It's a wonderful country. Colin Luther Powell was an average kid. He grew up playing stickball in the street, happily unaware of the wider world beyond his family and friends. Then he found the U.S. Army, and he found his destiny. And at that time, in the late 50s, when I entered the Army, the Army was truly the only integrated organization in American society. Without that kind of opportunity, I'm not sure where I would have ended up in life. The Army took Colin Powell out of the South Bronx, first to Germany, hard up against the Iron Curtain, then back to the States, where he met another destiny, a lovely young woman from Birmingham, Alabama. Alma Vivian Johnson was the child of educators, bright and eager to make a difference in the world. Then that tall soldier came calling. It was a whirlwind courtship, a whirlwind wedding, and a sudden introduction to Army life. Vietnam was waiting. News of his first child's birth came to him in the jungle. He carried little Michael's picture in his breast pocket. Back home, Alma raised a growing family. You know, she was a rock. Um, you know, if people think he's electric, she's the ground wire. I mean, she's the one who always uh, kept the family together. He came home from Vietnam to a country torn in two. Protesters thronging the streets of the capital. A country suspicious of its government and alienated from its fighting men. He would spend his life rebuilding the nation's trust and restoring America's pride in its military. He knew firsthand the sacrifices every soldier makes. Their safety, their respect, and their trust were his first priority. It was all about caring for people. Um, when I became an Army officer, the morning I was gonna leave for Germany, he came into my room and woke me up and gave me a kiss and said, you know, good luck. And the only advice he gave, he said, remember, take care of our soldiers. His dedication, intelligence, and quick wit soon drew attention to this young officer. And Colin Powell found himself called to the Pentagon and then to the White House. What struck me most about Colin was his great sense of humor, uh, his, his caring about others, and his ability to relate to everybody from the delivery boy to the President of the United States. He would go on to ably serve under five presidents. He played a key role in President Reagan's historic summit with Mikhail Gorbachev and the complex disarmament negotiations that led to the end of the Cold War. As chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President George Bush, he led the nation to war in the face down with Saddam Hussein in Kuwait. To his soldiers, he was hands-on. To America and the world, he was the face of American loyalty to its allies and American resolve in the fight against tyranny. The troops of Desert Storm returned to a hero's welcome and a country that had rediscovered its pride in its military and its place in the world. In September 1993, this faithful soldier laid down his sword and left the army that he loved so well. A grateful nation offered its thanks. He clearly has the warrior spirit and the judgment to know when it should be applied in the nation's behalf, who could be trusted to feel in his heart the awesome responsibility for the lives and livelihoods for the present and future of every man and woman who wore the uniform of the United States of America. But his service to his country had not ended. In December 2000, the boy from the South Bronx was appointed Secretary of State, where his distinguished service won respect from both sides of the aisle. Colin Powell brought to his public service values he's had all his life, and that is one of absolute fidelity to the duty that has been assigned him, two, uh, being absolutely thorough, three, to try to build consensus. Maybe that's why I miss him so much. He has retired from government but not from public service. Now, Colin Powell devotes his energies full-time to helping young people. So I believe it's important that as part of whatever we do in our business life or in our private life, 
We work with young people and we prepare the next generation of leaders for our country and the next generation of leaders for our world. Together, Colin and Alma Powell have devoted untold time and energy to America's promise, the Alliance for Youth. Founded by Colin Powell in 1997, America's Promise makes youth a national priority. When I think of partnership, I think of America's Promise, the Alliance for Youth, the way it partners with groups all across this country to help young people. But I also think of another extraordinary and unique partnership, Colin and Alma Powell. As a team, they have worked across this country to give our young people a better life. I've had the privilege of watching Alma step in as a real leader in that organization. And I'm convinced that what inspires her every day and makes her such a terrific leader for this cause is the true love and dedication she has, not only for youth in Washington or the U.S., but truly youth around the world. As a leader, she motivates and inspires. There are good things going on out there, and we have to continue to encourage them and to inspire others to say, oh, hey, we can do that too. And so we ask constantly of people, this is what's being done, what can you do? Always a committed volunteer, Alma Powell contributes her many talents to causes of all kinds, but her focus remains helping children and supporting the communities in which they grow. When it comes to civic work, I don't know anyone who does as much as Alma Powell. She's involved in I don't know how many charities, with the Kennedy Center. And you just go down the whole list and you'll find Alma's name there. But more than the name, you'll find Alma. Since Alma's been vice chair of the Kennedy Center, our educational programming has grown by about a factor of five. We now spend over $25 million a year trying to bring arts to children all across America. And a lot of this is because of her dedication to children and to her belief that bringing arts to children is a vital part of their education. But I think her main focus is outreach to the community, especially children. She wants to make sure that the Washington community has access to the Kennedy Center and it's not just for a privileged few. It's an old fashioned idea, a life spent in service. It's a story of two people who have lived the American dream and who believe every child deserves a share in that dream. Those to whom much is given, much is asked. And so you have not fulfilled your place if you have not helped someone else along the way.